Greetings Midco Seekers, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. You might recognize that tune as Kansas City. That's one we did way, way back. I think we performed it at the Uke Fest uh, at one point. But I, um, I'm not suggesting necessarily that we bring the song back and uh, perform it in our, our set of jam tunes. But I think it might be worth revisiting just for a, for a couple of reasons that I'll explain shortly. But the song is by Fats Domino. He's the guy that recorded it. Uh, the people who were responsible for writing it were Lieber and Stoller, and uh, they were a famous songwriting team out of New York City, out of the Brill Building, and uh, they wrote tons of songs for Elvis and um, Jerry Lee Lewis and Roy Orbison and very famous songwriters. Um, you'll see their songs all over the place if you look at that late 50s, early 60s uh, Billboard Top 100 chart. You'll see a lot of the hits back then were written by those two guys, Lieber and Stoller. So... It's um, a great old tune, and of course, Fats Domino, being a New Orleans guy, a New Orleans piano guy, he has um, a real particular kind of feel and regional style in his um, playing and singing. And so this song kind of contains that New Orleans thing, plus that Brill Building, New York, uh, Tin Pan Alley thing, too. So there's a lot of different uh, great American cultural influences kind of, kind of coming together in a song like this. Uh, Fats Domino being uh, really well known for his uh, piano playing, his, his skills on the piano. So he has uh, something going on in the left hand of the piano, and he has something going on in the right hand of the piano, and then combined that creates this really infectious rhythm. And the thing that he's doing in the left hand, we won't, won't necessarily learn how to play this unless you uh, request it, and then I'll show you exactly. I'll send you a little tab uh, to show you this, but here's the left hand piano part. Um, if you play bass, you know this, because this is exactly what the bass player on the record did along with Fats Domino's um, left hand. You've probably heard that kind of thing before. That's known as a boogie-woogie bass line, and uh, that's a very common thing in New Orleans piano playing, also in ragtime piano playing from uh, New York at the turn of the uh, 20th century, but also lots of 50s rock and roll has that, a lot of Elvis Presley songs and um, Chuck Berry songs and Jerry Lee Lewis and all those guys. So um, that boogie-woogie bass line is probably a familiar sound to you. So that's just one part. That's catchy enough as it is. But in the right hand, what he's doing is he's stabbing chords on the and of the of the beat, um, the upbeat. And uh, that's kind of how I was strumming my ukulele. Um, I was strumming on the upbeat. And some of you might remember me uh, teaching the group how to do this. But uh, this is both the right hand piano and the guitar. The guitar is kind of doing the strum uh, right along with that. So here it is, and then I'll explain it. So it's um, broken down easily into two parts, and one part is the chuck. You do a chuck for the down strum, for the down beat, and then you do a, a up strum for the up beat. There it is in slow motion. And by doing that chuck, that not only uh, creates a percussive sound, but it stops the previous chord from ringing, the previous strum from ringing. And so you have this, this strum that's kind of sustaining and ringing and vibrating. And then when you go to do your chuck, that stops it. So it makes your strum sound short. And that's a very catchy rhythm, having uh, short strums like that. It really swings, as opposed to having them ring out like that. That just wouldn't be right. That would not have the right New Orleans uh, boogie-woogie piano feel. So it's real important to uh, understand that rhythm. You don't have to play that strum if that's too complicated for you um, and your level of proficiency. While you could get away with just doing a simple down and up, just, you know, something bluesy. That'd be totally fine. That'd be a nice basic strum to master if... Uh, you're not yet ready for this uh, New Orleans thing. But yeah, that was just down, up, down, up, down, up, but using swing eighth notes, not um, straight eighth notes like this. Down, up, down, up, down. It's not the song Yesterday by Paul McCartney. That, that has a straight eighth note feel. This is more of a um, swing eighth note feel. 
one and two and three and four and one and two. And you can tell from the way he sings it too. He sings on those off beats a lot. I'm going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Doom, doom, boom, 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 dum, dum. I'm going to Kansas City. So he's not singing always right on the beat. He sings a lot on the off beat. And it just swings like crazy. Very infectious rhythm. It was, um, you know, kind of a simple sounding record with only a few instruments on it, a small group. It was recorded modestly in a modest recording studio, not, you know, the most super high tech studio that they would use for symphony orchestras and Frank Sinatra and that sort of thing. It was, you know, pretty modest. And uh, the instrumentation, the arrangement, everything about it was modest. And uh, another thing that makes this mo kind of modest, in my opinion, is that it's a 12 bar blues. It uses only three chords. Uses C, well actually four chords if you count the C7, but C, C7, F7, and G7. So it's basically, you know, if you take away the C7, a three chord, 12 bar blues, a very simple form. So it's kind of modest in that way too. And um, it's a short record. It's a 45 um, single from back in the late 50s. And I do believe probably lasts only like a couple of minutes songs back then. Uh, that were in the top uh, 40 hit parade were oftentimes two minutes long, three minutes at the most. And so it's modest in that way, too. It's a real short record. Um, but let's go over that strum. So chuck on the way down, strum on the way up, chuck on the way down, strum on the way up. That'll take some practice, but if you do it real slow, it'll come together for you. And maybe try counting it. You don't have to count it necessarily out loud. Just uh, in your head, be thinking one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that'll get you through. So let's do one round of that together at the speed, at the Fats Domino tempo. And uh, yeah, let's do one entire verse. One, two, one, two, three. I'm going to... Next verse would happen. I'm going to be standing on the corner, 12th Street and Vine. So it goes by pretty quick. It's a very short cycle, 12 measures of music. But it's uh, something that you can really break down and simplify and practice slow. Work on that a little bit every day if you don't already have it mastered, and you'll get it. Super um, catchy strum. And um, that'll set you apart from other ukulele players who are just going which is perfectly fine. I'm not putting you down if you're doing this. If you can do that, you're doing a solid strum. You're doing a nice, um, good, solid, rhythmic strum. But if you can do this, you're kind of a cut above. You're actually a little bit further along. So work on it and you'll get there. You'll, you'll put yourself in the next level of ukulele strumming uh, proficiency and rhythmic literacy. You'll know uh, a lot more about rhythm if you can do that. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about is there's a little guitar lick in there that's really catchy. I want to show you that guitar lick. It's um, at the end of the verses. So he goes, um, for instance, um, and I'm a gonna get me one. So, um, gonna Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Gonna Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got some pretty little women there, and I'm a gonna get me one. That electric guitar lick, uh, just a three note lick, but an extremely catchy one. I'll show you real quick how to do that. You play the notes A, the note G, and the note C. So we're sliding into the note A, fifth fret of your E string, with whatever finger you want. I use my third though. And then third fret of the E string, that's the note G. And then simply an open C string. Really easy. And uh, sliding, you know, that might be a new technique to you, but even if you don't slide, 
It's still a nice combination of three notes. It's very singable. Da, da, da. Real catchy. So that's, um, yeah, that's the guitar lick at the end. So that's about the size of it. It's a simple song. There's not a lot of complexity to it, but that's one of the beauties of it is that it's simple, it's fun, it's catchy. And maybe we'll do it again. If enough of you get real excited about this song, I'd be totally willing to resurrect it and add it back into our set list. All right, Mid Coast Euchres, you take care, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.